Things are quiet across much of the country on this Wednesday afternoon. We can see the influx of some cool, dry air into the eastern U.S., coming down from the Great Lakes and towards the Atlantic coast. Further up into New England, we've got this persistent occlusion that appears to be finally coming out of Quebec. That's heading into Maine, bringing some cold core activity into that part of the country. As we can see down on the Gulf Coast, well, the Gulf is not open. In fact, going over to the precipitable water chart, there's that dry air moving down into the Gulf Coast region. And you can see right in the core of that, looking at the forecast soundings, that's a pretty substantial amount of dry air. You can see zero cape, precipitable water down to less than an inch. However, down to the south, the next big change will be coming up. That's going to be some sort of tropical depression or tropical storm. When that gets named, it's likely to be Claudette. And that's going to come into Louisiana around Saturday. And that will dramatically increase the precipitable water values in the Gulf Coast region, bringing them up to near record highs. Here's the weather picture for this afternoon. We've got a Pacific system making some headway into the Dakotas. Temperatures have come down quite a bit in Montana and the tail end of it coming through Utah and into the deserts of Nevada and California. But even here, the cold front is getting eroded and modified very heavily. The air mass back there really modifying and temperatures remaining in the 90s. So that cold front there not bringing very much relief. We've got excessive heat warnings all the way from the San Joaquin Valley into Arizona. Temperatures at this hour up to 108 at Phoenix. That's pretty far away from the daily record of 115. Tucson's record 113. That's apparently not in jeopardy either. And Las Vegas, their record would be 114. And it's probably getting there. We've got another couple of hours to go here. Another place where they're getting heat. Well, we just shift our attention to the east, and we can see that from Aberdeen, South Dakota, down through Valentine, and into the Grand Island area, hundreds. Yeah, let's get in here and look at the data a little bit better. The cold front, we can see that coming south about like that, and the temperatures. We got 105 at Ogallala. 104 at Imperial. That breaks the daily record by two degrees. Valentine tying the record at least at 100. It may have come down a little bit. And North Platte has definitely broken that 100 degree record. So definitely some heat in that part of the country. And here's how bad it's going to get in the days ahead. This is the official Weather Service forecast. For Thursday, you can see 110s popping up at Sacramento and Redding. So we're spreading that heat into the California deserts and into the San Joaquin Valley. Phoenix also coming up to 117, and it's going to be another hot day on Friday. 118 for Phoenix, and lots of 110s up and down the valley of California. And some of that heat will be affecting the northern deserts all the way into Salt Lake City, where they're expecting 100. And in that hot, high terrain, that's going to mean some challenging density altitudes if you're one of those people that fly airplanes. So that's something to be aware of. Fortunately, there is relief on the way for Saturday. Highs coming down just a little bit. And then by Sunday, yep, the heat is being turned down very gradually. Yep, the central plains. For today, you can see those 100s and that 105 right there. And then the heat starts shifting eastward into some of the more inhabited areas, such as Omaha, expecting 104. This is for Thursday. And that would break the daily record of 100 Topeka expecting probably 101 to 102. That would also break a record, and that would be the first 100-degree day since August 5th of 2018. So it's been almost three years. Looking at 105 there at Salina, that's another record there. So it's just looking bad, 102 at Wichita. And let's see 
what happens on Friday. Some of that heat will be spreading into Missouri and into the Midwest. We can see that heat coming in for tomorrow. 96 there at St. Louis, 97 at Des Moines. And then for Friday, look at that, 102 at St. Louis. And yes, that will break a record. Uh, 100 is the high for the date for St. Louis. So that's going to be toast. For Saturday, the heat moderates quite a bit. That's a big change. So fortunately, that will be a short-lived heat wave. And then just taking a quick look up in Canada, very powerful system going through Manitoba. So I may check the satellite loop to see if we have any severe weather. Some very strong cold air advection through the prairies, giving them some relief temperatures down into the 70s. And then checking back up into Yukon and Alaska where we saw 80s up in this area. In fact, remember Prudhoe Bay, they were looking at 67 or something like that. It's come down about 20 to 25 degrees. A little burst of cold air coming onto the north slope and into Yukon. However, inland, temperatures still appear to be coming up close to 80. And then out in the Canadian high Arctic, that looks to be maybe a chunk of that polar air mass coming off of the Chukchi Sea into the Beaufort Sea, driving some cold air into Victoria Island, Northwest Territories and Nunavut, and some of that's coming down into the Northwest Territories. Depending on what the system down to the south does, a little bit of that could snake around into the Northern Plains and Great Lakes area in a few days. Well, checking in on Manitoba, don't see a whole lot going on. Looks like some decaying storms across Northern Lake Winnipeg, I think that is. You can see them going up early in the morning in far eastern Saskatchewan, but it looks like they start dying off probably in training some of that dry air sitting out over Ontario and northeastern Manitoba. A quick check of the upper air conditions. That shows a pretty strongly developed ridge across Europe. This has been kind of a persistent area of blocking. Also a very well-developed polar vortex, very broad, centered on eastern Greenland and Svalbard. Also, that ridge that has been plaguing the northern plains and Rockies, that's it right there, extending all the way up into the northern Alaska region. So no wonder they've been seeing some very hot weather. And then out over the Gulf of Alaska into the East Pacific, very large trough right there. That's helping to bring a piece of the polar front jet into Washington and Idaho, Oregon. However, it's not particularly strong. Let's see the evolution of that field over the next week or so. The ridge across Canada breaks down and gets dislodged and picked up by the prevailing westerlies, bringing that into the Great Lakes over Thursday and Friday. And everything progresses eastward. We get into kind of a zonal pattern in the U.S. Another trough descending down from Canada, affecting mostly the Great Lakes around Saturday. And then moving into the weekend, looks pretty quiet. However, we do start developing this northwesterly flow. Look at the absence of that ridging over the southwestern U.S. So it does look like we will gradually get somewhat of a break. This next system probably will drive some cold air southward. This troughing that you see here over Canada and the Northern Plains, that's going to be induced by the cold air in the lower part of the troposphere. So definitely we have some cold air working southeastward, at least through Minnesota and through some of the adjoining states. Very strong trough across the Midwest, so it appears some cool air and maybe a bit of a turbulent weather pattern. And then the ridge gets reestablished once again around midweek over the Rockies, so it looks like temperatures will come up once again. Another trough coming onto the California coast, so there may be some weather with that. That's going to be around Friday, Saturday, maybe some storms on the higher terrain. And really no significant change after that. And then taking a closer look at the 500 millibar heights and vorticity, there's that high over the Four Corners area, bringing that hot weather 
to much of the southwestern U.S., and you can see that breaking down the heights, gradually dropping. And we have this other trough coming out of Canada, bearing in mind the relationship between upper troughs and ridges and surface fronts. We would be looking for maybe a cold front coming south, kind of like that, maybe a warm front across the Great Lakes. So possibly a round of storms around Friday. And then the cold air comes in behind that. And then the flow turns northwesterly, and it looks like kind of a cooling trend for that part of the country. And we'll put it all together and get a look at our tropical system coming out of the Gulf. Let's see, Wednesday, Thursday. This is going to be our cold front. Kind of hard to pick that out, but there it is. And looks like that gets reinforced and drives southward. Somewhere in there for Friday. However, yeah, it's kind of looking like maybe a bit of a dry system through much of the western Great Lakes, but GFS triggering a few thunderstorms there for max heating on Friday. And then down in the Gulf, there's our tropical system. Let's zoom in on that and take a look at the wind field because that certainly has changed a little bit. The general track has been kind of persistent, or I should say consistent. However, there's been some west to east variation. Now the GFS, it looks like it shifted back east on that track, slows it down, and then, yeah, it, it has shifted eastward into the Lake Charles area. So that's a little bit of relief there for the Texas coast. And let's see what the European model is doing. Here comes our system, and you'll notice that the sustained winds are only 30 knots, so this isn't going to be a very dangerous storm, just a little bit of breezy conditions, maybe some localized gusts, and mostly a lot of rain. And the European model likewise bringing that into the central Louisiana coast, and that's backed off from that track that we had yesterday, which was going more towards Beaumont. So the impacts here will be mostly on Louisiana, and that'll be for Saturday, most of pretty much all day on Saturday. And just a quick plug for my Instability, Scooty, and Hodograph handbook. I hardly ever plug my stuff. I'm sure a lot of you are aware of that, but uh, Instability, Scooty, and Hodograph handbook will get you up to speed on Scooties, Hodographs, and severe weather indexes. It's pretty much a grounds up treatment of all the fundamentals and it's hobbyist friendly and to get a copy go to weathergraphics.com slash ish ish instability scooty photograph and for a limited time i will sign your copy just put your request in the comments field of the order form either way your purchase supports this program and that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care and we will talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.